بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Which Quran do we read? Why do we let these radical imams brainwash some of us? Come here, we sit, we sleep in khutbas, we don't get the message, that's why we miss it. All I need you to be grateful, Allah. Are you telling me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not protect the, the prestige of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? only living for business. That's all our dream. Let me see who shall save you now. Matter. Nobody, nobody. I have no control right now. Look at the armies, look at the power, and I know you will take you care of your house. You want to see two Muslims, a Salafi and a Tabliki, smiling and making jokes together? They'll be trying to kill each other. Alhamdulillah, in Ahmaduhu, when I star in who, when I star of Firahu, when I mean Obehi, when at the Wakalu Alay, when I would be lay him in Shuruti and Fusena, Waming Sayi at Yarmalina. May I de Hilla who fala mozil lala, Waming your lil who fala her diala. When I shed one la ilaha illa law who are the who la sharikala. وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّا مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدَهُ وَرَسُولُهُ اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل أقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين أما بعد الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salatul Jumu'ah and uh, to listen to the khutbah. We ask Allah sub subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een and upon his family members and companions, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us, to shower his guidance, his hidayah, to shower his forgiveness and acceptance upon us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our salah, our dua, and all our a'mal fi sabilallah, inshallah. I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to be able to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to fulfill this responsibility, inshallah. I once more seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance, inshallah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. Last week, brothers and sisters, for those of us who were here, you would remember <clears throat> we started the brief synopsis or summary of Surah Al A'la, the 87th chapter of the Holy Quran, and we went down in the very beginning to remind ourselves of some of the fadail and virtues of this surah how the prophet sallallahu loved it so much so much so that he used to according to hazrat aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha recite this surah every day 
she said that he used he was very fond of reciting this surah in Salatul Wit. And many as ashab ajma'in and companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite the Surah Al A'la on the day of Eid al Fit on Eid Salah. On the Jum'ah Salah. So the main Salah he used to recite this Surah. Not only did he love the Surah, but the message of the Surah was important. I mean, that's the whole reason why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the messenger, would love the surah because of the message in the surah. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had directed him or directed the surah to him in the very beginning. And actually the whole surah was directed to him as to what he is supposed to do. And how he should apply this surah. Last week we went down in some of the first verses and reminded ourselves and we were talking about Subhisma Rabbikal A'la how the Prophet Sallallahu when this verse was revealed it was then he taught the Sahabas that we should say Subhana Rabbi Al A'la because A'la is Allah the Most High and it's linked to the closest position in Salah, which is Sajda. And we glorify Allah using that title or that sifat or attribute, as we may say. Very powerful, very spiritual. In the second khutbah today, brothers and sisters, we want to remind ourselves on the few other verses that we were not able to get into a little bit in details inshallah again those of us who were not here well it's better you get this the the khutbah of last week which is based i think the topic stuff seer of surah al a'la and then we will be able to connect today with yesterday or last week's khutbah inshallah however uh just to refresh my mind and refresh your mind, I'm just going to recite the surah once more in the first khutbah. So in the second khutbah, we'll get right into those verses we did not get a little bit in details with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah, Al-A'la, chapter 87 of the Quran. A'udhu billahi minash rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فَجَعَلَهُ غُثَاءً أَحْوَى سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَى وَنُيَسِّرُكَ لِلْيُسْرَى فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ فَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى سَيَذَّكْرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى الَّذِي يَسْأَلَ نَارَ الْكُبْرَى ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَى قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى إِنَّ هَذَا لَفِي السُّحُفِ الْأُولَى Suhufi Ibrahim wa 
Musa. I know last week I did not recite the entire surah. But because the Prophet wasallam used to recite the surah on a Friday, I just wanted to get the barakah reciting it in the khutbah. So that, you know, if we cannot live by this surah, we can at least get the barakat of reciting the surah, which was a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ on a Friday. And um, in the second khutbah, we'll get in, inshallah, to some of the latter verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى We want to continue from this ayah in the second khutbah, inshallah as a reminder to ourselves because last week we spoke on some of the falail and the other aspect in how Allah created us and how he made us in proportion we went down to the nine yards now the real key message in the surah in the second khutbah we want to remind ourselves of that inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah without reckoning inshallah. Wa akhira da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Why do we let these radical imams brainwash some of us? We come here, we sit, we sleep in khutbahs, we don't get the message, that's why we miss it. All I need you to be grateful. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusana wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdihillahu falamudillala wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala Wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la Wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abdahu wa rasooluh Once more we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al Jum'ah and to listen to the khutbah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een and to shower his peace and blessings onto the family members of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and onto the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us to shower his guidance, to shower his forgiveness, and to shower his acceptance upon us, inshallah. I once more, brothers and sisters, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahm upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to be able to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. Last week, brothers and sisters, I know the surah was all about the fadail and the whole beginning and the benefits etc today we want to get a little bit on the hardcore of the surah the real meat of the surah as we would say after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam everything about that and this and for thyle and his name and glorify allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ninth ayah of this chapter 87 surah al-a'la فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى This is very powerful, especially to those people who come to Jumar to sleep, to sit back, to relax, or those people who don't understand what the message of the Quran is all about. Allah says, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That's another verse. Remind and the believers will benefit. And hear what he's saying here. Hear what he's saying here. For that care enough at the zikra. Remind and some people will benefit who has to benefit. Oh, interesting. Now we could categorize that into the Muslim community. 
The Muslims who really want to bend, learn, ponder, listen, they are the ones who will pay heed, they will listen attentively, so that by listening attentively and paying heed, they will benefit. Oh, interesting. Now in the other verse where he said, for dhakr fa'inna dhikra tanfal mu'mineen, it was referring to definitely those who have iman and want to learn and want to listen and want to follow. When you remind them, they will definitely benefit. Now he is speaking, Allah is speak, telling the Prophet wasallam, you know what? I know, Allah is saying, yes, he Allah knows that there are people who don't care to learn. Oh yeah, that's important brothers. That there are people who don't care to listen. There are people who don't care to know. You know what Jesus, peace be upon him, said about this verse? Well, I mean, this verse came after. But in connection to this verse, if you link the words of Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he has a very interesting saying. Jesus, peace be upon him, said, Cast not pearls on swines. Uh -huh. Don't put pearls on pigs. Do not try to decorate a pig with beautiful necklaces and jewelry because the pig will still be a pig. That's a very famous saying of Jesus, peace be upon. Go in the Proverbs and quotations of Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Cast not pearls on swines. Okay. Now you're probably wondering why am I saying that about Jesus? Let's talk about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Well, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said something very similar to that. He said, teaching people who do not want to learn is like putting on a necklace on a swine. Uh -huh. Very good. Check Bukhari and Muslim. People who do not want to learn, it is like putting a necklace on, on a swine. You could put the most beautiful necklace on a pig if you don't understand what swine means. Eh? In Urdu, we call it what? Kinzir. Suwar, ah. pig, hog, swine, interesting word. Our Prophet Muhammad wasallam said it, Jesus peace be upon him said it, cast not pearls on swine, cast not a pearl on a swine because it wouldn't benefit the swine. You're only wasting your pearls. And the Prophet wasallam said, people who don't want to learn, do not intend to learn, do not care to learn, then don't throw Quran and Hadith on them because it wouldn't benefit them. You're only trying to decorate a pig. It wouldn't make the pig any different. Now this verse, however, for dhakir in nafati dhikra, this is a general statement in which Allah is saying, well, your job is to give. The Mufassirin have said, but give the message to those people who listen. Now they may not be able to practice at the same time. You know, it's like children. Let's take kids. You have a child. You send the child at nine and ten year old, as a nine and ten year old to the madrasa or the maktab to learn. The poor child, you've got to wake him up, give him a shower, push him in the car, and push him in the masjid too. He really doesn't want to go. But you know what? He's going. It's not that he doesn't want to learn. He has nothing against Allah and the Quran and Sunnah. But the poor child is so babyish, as we would say, loves to play, loves to sleep. But at least you send in the child to learn Quran. Listen to the life of the Prophet. ﷺ. Listen to the Quran. Maybe 40 years after that child, after going to college and marrying and getting off the path, will say, you know what? I remember hearing this in Madrasa. I remember reading this in the Quran. And boom, it hits him. You see? No. فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Tell the believers, tell the people. Some of them, as long as they want to listen. Now, if they don't want to listen, don't waste time with them. Oh, that's very important. Don't waste time with them. You tell the children, you tell the people, they listen. They may not be able to practice Salah five times a day. They may not be able to go to Hajj right away. They may not be able to do the nine yards right away. But sometime down the road, they will benefit. They will benefit. 
So the job the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet وسلم, in this verse, you remind. They will benefit some of them. But Allah knows there are some who won't and would not want to benefit. And He's telling him also, don't waste time on those who don't want to ben learn. But He's also telling them, as long as there are those who listen, don't worry. Your job is to give the message. And the Hidayah, Allah says, I give the guidance. As long as they listen, they will benefit a little bit. Very interesting. Very interesting. Then the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it links together with this verse. Now Allah is saying, those people who don't want to listen, those people who don't want to learn, those people who don't want to come to the khutbah to listen, don't want to come to a class to listen, don't go to listen, don't go to learn, and have turned away and said, I don't want to learn Quran, I don't need to learn Quran, I don't need to learn Hadith, I don't need to practice now, I don't need all of that. Hear what Allah is saying. وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَ الَّذِي يَسْلَ النَّارَ I will add both lines together. Those who turn away, those who avoid, those who take the sidetrack, that's what it really means. Those who sidetrack, always make an excuse to get away. They always sidetrack from wanting to learn. They always sidetrack from wanting to hear right from wrong. They always sidetrack from hearing hadith and Quran. It is because, it is because they, what? They have avoided and want to avoid. And what is going to happen to them? They are unfortunate, very unfortunate. Al Ashqa. Little do they know, they think they're great and they're big by avoiding the message of the Quran, the lesson of the Quran, the lessons of Allah. But unfortunately, little do they know, they are the unfortunate ones. So, what I'm telling you and myself, brothers and sisters, we may not be able to practice right away. We may not be able to do the nine yards right away. But at least make the effort to listen. At least make the effort to seek. At least make the effort to learn. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, that person who makes the effort to learn to read the Quran and finds difficulty in reading the Quran, that person gets a twofold blessings. And she narrates this from the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who was a husband. Closer than that you couldn't get. She says that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, when a person tries to read the Quran, learn the Quran, even practice the Quran, whatever, and find difficulties in doing it, that person gets two rewards. One, for learning and making the effort. Two, for not being able to practice but still not giving up and trying to learn and trying to learn and trying to practice. That person gets double fold blessings. Look at the rahmah of Allah. If you do, you get blessings. If you make the effort to do, you get double blessings if it's not happening. See the rahmah of Allah. But here Allah is speaking about those who don't want to make the effort. Those who don't want to learn. Those who don't want to sacrifice their sleep and their dunya. They, hmm. they not only are unfortunate, but the final analysis of those people is Nar al Kubra. They will find themselves in a very big fire. Interesting. What about this fire? fire? It's a fire in which they will never die. They will be burned forever and ever and ever and ever. They will neither enjoy life in it, nor will they die. You know, if you see a disaster, if you're sick, or you're suffering from a problem, or you're being burnt, and it's just being burnt and being burnt, you'll just prefer to just die than to suffer. So what Allah is saying here, that the suffering is going to be so much for them that it will never end. That's a serious consequence. Now to go back to the verse here, for that care for inna dhikra, no, for that care in nafa to dhikra, some of those people will benefit. Who? Sayyadhakaru may yaksha. The people who have fear for Allah. 
I just wanted to connect the ayah before to the first ayah. But those people who have fear for Allah, who got iman, who know that there's a day of qiyamah, who know that they will have to face Allah, they will pay heed to the message. And listen, this is a general statement. It's for those who don't believe in Allah, and it is for those of us who are Muslims. We believe in la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah, but our iman is not strong enough to believe in praying five times a day. We know we have to pray five times a day, but yet we don't do it. We know we should give our zakat properly, but yet we don't do it. We know we should go for hajj if Allah has blessed us with the means and the health and the wealth, but yet we don't do it. Now if we have the iman and we have the fear for Allah and we really have that taqwa to do our duty to Allah, we will do it, inshallah. Who will benefit from the reminder that Allah has commanded the Prophet ﷺ to remind the people? Those who have fear for Allah. Now, let's get down to another verse because I want to really get, get through this bi'ithnillah inshallah today. Qad aflaha man tazakka. Oh boy, this is a serious ayah. And I think this affects a lot of people. This word zakka here. This word, zakah, when Allah speaks of tazakah here, he means purity, purification. And you know the original meaning of the third pillar of Islam called zakat? It really means purification. We say charity, the third pillar of Islam, we say zakat is charity. But zakah does not really mean charity. Zakat means purification. So the Mufassirin on this verse here, Qad aflaha man tazakka, successful will be those who purify themselves. There are many angles to look at this ayah. Who are the people who purify themselves? You see, a lot of us listen to this, purify themselves. Some may mean, well, those who make wudu and take a ghusl and clean themselves physically. That's the literal meaning. Another meaning to this verse is those who cleanse themselves from bad deeds. They stay away from evil deeds. They purify their characteristics with good amal, good deeds. Not that you're praying salah, but you're robbing people. You're praying salah, but you're cheating people. You're praying salah in the masjid, you're underpaying your workers. You're praying salah in the masjid, you're robbing your boss, you're thiefing from your, your boss. Oh, that is very haram, eh? I always remember when I was studying fiqh, I asked that question clearly, and it was told to me by my sheikh of fiqh. He said, if a worker works for five hours and he puts in eight hours, he has robbed, he is stealing. And a lot of Muslims very famous for that, you know. They rob Uncle Sam, even their accounts too. They, they say, when they work for $100,000 for the year, they say we only work for $10,000. They're robbing all sides. That's a serious complication. Yeah? Be very careful. You go to work and you tell the worker, I came to work for eight hours. <clears throat> I worked this, I worked that. But you really lied. You checked off. Or you, you didn't even go to work. You had a friend check off the paper for you. Totally haram in Islam. Just as the Prophet ﷺ said that a boss must pay a worker before his sweat goes dry, similarly, a worker must not rob the boss or the company he's working for. Please, Muslims, do you know you're praying salah, you're reading salah, you've just fasted in Ramadan, we're going for hajj, but we are stealing, we are robbing. This is not the characteristic of a Muslim. A Muslim is supposed to have a clean characteristic or clean characteristics, a clean character. And that's what the Mufassirin says here. Kad aflahaman tazakka. Successful will be those who are pure, not just physically, but what? In mannerism. Remember on Eid day, the khutbah we spoke about, libas or taqwa, the clothing of piety. We got the CD available there. Clothing of piety. What is the clothing of piety? A nice jacket and tie, a gown and a mama? No! Clothing of piety doesn't mean that because there is no Sharia law as to what is the dress code for a man. As long as you cover the neighbor to the knee, 
You could have a Pakistani out, um, outfit. You could wear a Bangladeshi outfit. You could wear an uh, Indian kurta pajama. You could wear a Nigerian outfit. You could wear an Arab gown. That is not necessarily libas or taqwa. A lot of people in the Caribbean feel fooled when they wear a pajama and a kurta in Guyana and Trinidad. They think, oh boy, we're very Muslim. That's a very Hindu Pakistani thing. That's not a Muslim thing. I'm telling you in the Caribbean, I'm from Trinidad and that's what I'm telling you. Muslims put on a kurta and topi and a pajama and think we're very Muslim, not knowing they're very Indian. That's not libas or taqwa. That's the libas of Pakistanis and Indians and Bangladeshis. You have the clothing of the Arabs and the Nigerians and different people. You go to Indonesia, you see them with a lungi and a different design. Libas or taqwa means piety, good your, your morals, your characters are nice. You don't steal, steal from your boss. You don't lie to people. You're not a hypocrite. We don't do this. We don't do that. Things that tarnish our character. That is libas or taqwa. Doesn't matter which kurta and pajama and gown and, and, and baya or abaya or what, whatever it is we put on. It is the libas or taqwa. Qad aflaha man tazakka. So we need to purify this outside cloth also. You see, we purify the body with wudu and guthul. Guthul. We got to provide our amal with pure actions. Then we have a third explanation of this word, tazakka. The same zakat, meaning purification. That's why the fuqaha have said, the reason why in Islam the third pillar is called zakat, because when a man gives zakat, it purifies his wealth. It's a means of purifying him. It's a means of saving him from disasters and calamities. That's why a lot of people, if you have a million dollars, give, a mil, give your two and a half percent of a million dollars. Don't try to rob Allah. You already rob Uncle Sam. You already rob in the American government. You already rob your country. Some people live in this country and live in another country and beat the system so they could rob both countries. You already rob in everybody else. Try not to rob Allah. Because Allah doesn't need your money. Allah is Akbar. You know, a lot of Americans do that. They live here and they live there and money here and money there so they could rob everybody else. But they're robbing themselves. Because they live like a miser, suffering and cannot even enjoy the money they have. They're here and the money there. And then they, they die and somebody else take it. If not, the whole government take all that you were trying to rob the government from. Come on, Muslims, wake up, smell the coffee. Islam is not only about praying salah and fasting and performing hajj. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. That's why the law is zakat. Pay the, give the third pillar. It's purification. And you pay your full zakat of a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars. You are purified. Don't give how much you feel to give. Give what is the law. And that's a form of purification to you. Because you could end up in a problem and you're going to lose all the money. You know, statistics have proven that most of the people... Who win lottery money? You hear about the statistic? What is it? Most of the people who win lottery money end up paupers and die beggars and commit suicide. Now, they didn't even rob the system. But they got it very easy. And the greediness of the money caused them to crash. And crash. See? Now, if they use it properly, that is a whole different thing. Take the money and give it in charity and help the poor and help the needy and do some good. Mashallah, Allahu Akbar. If it came to you easily, don't go and throw it on the street and throw it away. And nobody's saying to be that stupid. You happen to get the money, you better utilize it. You have money in the bank in America and you get a $10,000 interest. Don't come fool us and put it in the box for the masjid. Go help some poor people around the place. I know Brother Azad will want it anyhow, but don't put it in the masjid. <laughs> Brother Azad takes anything you give him. <laughs> but, <laughs> I could make joke about him, don't worry. Come on. <laughs> because there were some Muslims once upon a time, they were not taking their interest money from the bank. And then the bank took it and gave some other people who used that same money to build a church in front of a masjid. And they decided, you know what, let's get a little smart. 
Just take the money, go pay taxes, go pay for this, go pay for these, these other governmental things, your toll, your taxes, your insurance, because you've got to drive a car, you've got to pay insurance for your home in America, you've got to pay insurance for your car. You could use all that money for that. Now that's a whole different thick muscle. We talk about that in another class. I don't want to get it off the topic here. Now, this is where the Fukaha have said that purification we must give. And there's a problem. A lot of people who pray Salah five times a day do not really pay their zakah properly. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It is reported that when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu would tell people to give sadaqah, you know, to give sadaqah, to give charity, he will recite this first before. He will recite first this verse. Qad aflaha man He would tell people, purify yourself. Give charity. Give your zakat. Give to the poor. Help. Spread the message. Give in the part of Allah. Poor, needy, whatever. Purify yourself before wa dhakar asma rabbihi Allah. Very interesting. Before you get into all the dhikr of Allah and praying this long salah, come on. That's the next ayah. Spend your wealth properly. And give, Allah, is, Allah says to give. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to tell the sahabas, quote this verse and tell them to give. You know, it is like how in Ramadan people put up their hand and say, I pledge. And the next year come this, you don't even see the pledge. Sometimes you don't even see them. Sometimes you ask, like, I know, alhamdulillah, two weeks ago I asked people for the books. You know, this week I had orders for about 600 books some from, North, from the, um, New York and uh, Long Island and all these different places. Interesting. Alhamdulillah, there were some brothers and there are some families who have sponsored. We reached almost 3,000 of the books. And I told you we have to do them in 5,000, the Arabic reader. Because we have a lot of people who are asking us for the books. We really do need to print it in 5,000. We got, I said one brother alone that sponsored 1,000. Last two weeks ago, we picked up in the last two weeks 2,000. We had got to do another 2,000 to do the complete order. We got a lot of students all over. Now, I'm not saying, alhamdulillah, all those who have given, mashallah. But what I'm saying is, giving helps to purify our wealth. And that's why Umar radiallahu ta'ala, who used to quote this and said, successful will be the people who give their charity, who spend it. Those of you who have pledged, you must give it. Don't wait to die. When you die, who is going to give it on your behalf? You may not have a son or daughter to do it. They might be looking for it themselves. So if you pledge to give and spend, do it. As soon as Allah has blessed you with the ability, do it. What game are we playing? Who are we fooling? Next verse, وَذَكَرَ asma رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى You know, it's interesting. وَذَكَرَ asma رَبِّهِ This is the dhikr of the name of Allah. Ismi Rabbi. If you break up this verse, وَذَكَرَ And make the dhikr glorify. Ismi Rabbihi, the name of your Lord. Then Allah says for Salah, and then also pray Salah. I know there are some people who say you should not recite the names of Allah. Do you know the 99 names of Allah? It's called the Asmaul Husna. They are the beautiful names of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam has said, if anyone recites the Asmaul Husna, the 99 names of Allah, and make dua to Allah, the dua will be accepted inshallah. This verse, I'm telling you from a tafsir and not from a hadith and not from anywhere else. Wa dhakara and glorify ismi rabbihi, the name of him, your Lord. We use the name of Allah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah, al-hakib, al-alib, al-ghafoor, al-shakoor, the names of Allah. Just to call the names of Allah, Allah is telling us in the Quran, yes, he's telling us to call him by his names. But remember the surah started with Sabbihisma Rabbikal A'la. That Allah is the most high. Allahu Akbar, the greatest. You got many attributes. Look, they are all around the wall here in Darul Because I know some people tell you it's bidah. How could it be bidah when Allah uses the word Asma al Husna in the Quran? How could it be bidah to say, Ya Hakim, Ya Ghafoor, Ya Alim, Ya Allah? Why? Ya Majid. Ya Ghafur Rahim. Those are the names of Allah. And Allah is saying here, those of you who, who follow too much of Sheikh, what do you call it? 
Share Google and Mufti YouTube and get your mind concocted and corrupted outside. I have no problem who you listen to, but go back into the Quran and confirm it. Don't let people tell you eat haram and don't stay away from the names of Allah and go eat haram meat and say bismillah over it. Soon they may tell you put a pig on your head and say Allahu Akbar. Because they already told you to eat haram meat in America. It's only to tell you say bismillah and eat the pig. Because they've already permitted you to sell it, to cook it, but you're right on a stand to eat. As soon as you get hungry, you could eat it too. They're not far from telling you that. Listen to everybody and learn, but go back into the Quran and make sure you get it from here. Authorized, inshallah. Allah is telling you. Some people say to call, to do dhikr of the name of Allah is bidda. Look the verse here. Wa dhaka rasma rabbihi. That's separate. For salah is separate. Make the dhikr of Allah. Call the names of Allah. Subhana Rabbi Allah. Deem. Subhana Rabbi Allah. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. This is very authentic. Don't listen to these half big. I don't like to say idiots, but ninkam poops is a better word. Who tell you about making dhikr of Allah and making the dhikr of Allah is bidda and haram. Go to show them this verse of the Quran, chapter 87, verse 15. I tell you, a lot of people pass a lot of fatwas on stories. Let them give you the authentic verse of the Quran before they pass the fatwa. You don't pass fatwas on stories. This Sahaba story and that Sahaba story. Sahaba stories are motivation. But you cannot pass a fatwa on that. You pass fatwa on Quran and Sunnah. Direct on what the Prophet ﷺ had ordered. And even if the Prophet ﷺ says something that contradicts what the Quran says, you don't even take that because the chain of narration could be corrupted. Isn't that the Islam we believe in? Then we follow a bunch of old traditional Islam with all kind of foreign things. Sometimes I think that people come to America with higher learning and higher understanding, country of opportunity and intelligence, and yet we take back the garbage from the gutter that we came from. You know, I always remember a statement. It's easy to take a man from the gutter, but it's hard to take the gutter from inside of him. But let us make the knowledge take that gutter out of us. That is why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he started preaching and teaching the message to the Arabs who were the most barbaric at that time, the most ignorant at that time, the most arrogant at that time, haughty, they were powerful, they were dynamic, but they were very haughty and arrogant. And he was able to conquer them and give them this message and Allah bless them they benefited all right they benefited and that's the Islam we use we don't use culture and reward and tradition otherwise we won't benefit we'll only read and recite the Quran but will not benefit then Allah goes in the next verse well in that very same verse with Rasma Rabbihi for Salah two things Allah tells us make the dhikr of his name and for Salah and pray your Salah to link this verse with the verse before, Kad aflahaman zakah. In addition to pray, paying your zakat, giving charity, giving zakat, being charitable, Allah also says, successful are those who make the dhikr of Allah for salah and make do the salah. So it's three things you have compact here purification of yourself, financially, morally, physically, and the spiritual dhikr. And the salah comes compact. Then in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bal al dunya wa This is more or less the last verse because the other one, inna hadha la fi suhuf al-ula, suhuf Ibrahim wa Musa, that more or less is the same message that we are reminded of. Allah is telling us it was the same message that he gave to Moses and Ibrahim Islam in the previous scriptures and in the pages and the revelations that came to the prophets before. So the last verse that we want to conclude with here. Bal al hayat dunya Allah is now telling us, O oh people who don't want to listen, O oh people who don't want to learn, okay? O oh people who don't want to give your zakat and your charity, O oh, people who don't want to make the dhikr of Allah. O oh, people who don't want to pray your salah. O oh, people who don't want to clean yourself of the bad habits. What Allah is saying, these bad habits are only weaknesses of the dunya. These bad habits that we do are all because of our glory and our love for this dunya. 
And Allah is saying, Bal al hayat dunya. But let us be known. Allah tell, is telling us, I know that you prefer the life of the dunya. He's not asking us, you know. He's telling us, I know that you people prefer the life of this dunya. You just come and listen to khutbah. Fall asleep, go home and eat and say, boy, forget what he said. That is Quran. That is for yesterday. It's not for us today. We live in America. Our style is different. We could eat anything we want. We could do whatever we want. We, don't, we could eat haram. We could walk in McDonald's and eat anything we want. Go in Publix and anywhere. We, could, we don't need to get married according to Quran and Sunnah. We could fornicate and, adult and do adultery. We just got to pay the lawyer and win the case. This is America. We got money. We got it. Allah says, that's your weakness. That's your love for the dunya. And because of your love for the dunya, Allah is telling us, because of our love for the dunya, because we prefer this dunya, we give priority to the life of the dunya. Now, it's not a matter of love living in this dunya. We have no choice to live in this dunya. Allah created us here. We were born here. We have no choice where we were born, where we will die, when we will die, to whom we were born, whether we born a Trini, a Guyanese, a Pakistani, a Bengali, or, a Pak or Arab, Arab, or African, it doesn't matter. Allah made that decision. So Allah has no problem of us being born in America and in Japan and China and Pakistan. He has a problem with us choosing the luxuries and the materialistic things of this life and depriving ourselves from Qad aflahaman from purifying ourselves from bad ways, bad things, un-Islamic things, from hoarding wealth, only looking to make money and not pay the proper zakat, only looking to hoard money and not give a charity and help other people. Allah said, what do you want? What are you building, a castle for yourself? Allah says, I know you prefer this dunya, but I am telling you, that the life of the hereafter is better than this dunya. That's what Allah is saying. You see, if we have Iman, it will benefit us. What, 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 what Allah says? You see how we link this ayah back? If we have Iman in Allah, then we will pay heed and change our life and benefit from the message of the Quran. Allah says, Wal akhiratu khairun wa abqa. But let it be known that the life of the hereafter is better than this that we run behind. Yes, we have to live here, but we must live here for the pleasure of Allah. Eat, enjoy, halal and tayyibah, enjoy, eat, drink. Don't waste, wala tusrifu, don't waste. Don't do haram, eat halal. You know one of the signs? And you know, today is a sort of semi-holiday for college students and people, and I want to tell especially college and university students this. You know, one of the punishments in the hereafter, in, in Jahannam, when the Prophet ﷺ went on Miraj, and he was shown Jahannam, he saw some people eating raw, rotten meat. It was raw, and it was rotten. Have you ever seen rotten meat? Well, sometimes you can't even see it, because it, is so, it smells so bad, you don't even want to go look at it. Real, rotten, stink, nasty, dirty meat. And they eat it. They digest it. They go back, they eat again. It corrupt them and confuse them. And that's all they're eating. So he asked Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, who are these people who eat this rotten, stink, nasty meat? Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam says, those are the people who committed fornication and adultery. Instead of making nikah and getting married, they went to university and they slept with all the women in the university. They slept with all the boys before they got married. Or they get married and they sleep with all the women after. They in hell will be eating haram, nasty, stink, rotten, dirty meat. Why? Because they left the halal woman that Allah made halal for them to nikah and marry. And they went and did the haram meat. That's a serious punishment. That is one. You see, money and women are two of the desire that people fall for in this dunya. That's why I lose, use that example. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ says on the day of judgment, the wealth that we don't give in Chai am your zakat. You didn't want to pay me when you were in Florida? Well, take it now. Eat me now. And the snake will keep on stinging us with the venom. 
The Prophet Wasallam says, one of those serpent, the venom is so bad that if the dr uh, one drop of the venom of this snake falls on the earth, not a blade of grass will grow after. Allahu Akbar. And that's the kind of haram wealth we will have to eat. Those of us who rob people, who steal, and who have, and don't pay zakat to purify our wealth. Don't fool people you're giving five and ten thousand dollars, and Allah knows you got a million and you don't give justification. Allah will deal with us, and we'll have to start with the snake first. This is serious consequences. That's why I said last week was the nice camouflage of the surah. This is the deadly part. We have to be consistent in our zikr of Allah. That's why it compacts. Do all the things that we need to do to purify ourselves. Libasu taqwa. Don't only think you look beautiful. Get all these bad habits and nasty and haram things. Even though we hear praying salah, we come for Juma, we read in Quran, but we have all these things, we'll have to pay the consequences for it. Please, brothers and sisters, I know I don't like to sound so harsh, but this is just a reminder to myself and you. Because the whole theme of this verse, of this surah is, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ فَأَتِ الذِّكْرَى سَيَذَّكَّرُ مَيْ يَخْشَى Allah commanded the Prophet ﷺ to remind and some of the people will benefit. Who are the people will benefit? Those who have fear for Allah. Those who have fear for Allah and fear the day of judgment and know the consequences and the punishment, they will do it. Last but not least, as we conclude the khutbah, brothers and sisters, what is the purpose of living this life? And it happens. A lot of people, yes, they boast that they are not praying and they're enjoying life. Mashallah, Allah bless you. But why, and I want to tell my young students and friends and youths who go to school and colleges, why do you want to live 60 years of your life in sin, eating haram, doing haram, going haram? You know, why you want to do that? And then the last part of your life, when you reach 60 and you can't do anything else, you're regular in the masjid, but you're more punctual than Brother Azad in the masjid for Zohar. He comes here an hour before. I know he has to make up for a lot of past, but anyhow. The point... <laughs> I'd like to make joke with him. He's my partner. Don't worry. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> the point I'm getting at is, hear what? A lot of us fool ourselves. That, oh, yeah, I'll go masjid. I'll pray salah. I'll give zakat. I'll give my charity. I will stay away from haram. But you know what we do? When we're young and we're strong and the pocket is heavy and we got the money and we got the wealth and we got the beauty and we got the strength, we just flaunt it. We just flirt it. Hear what happens. It's not so much that we come to the masjid at 60, you know. It's because no young girl really wants you at 60 anymore. Your children already married and left and gone away. You're lonely in your home. Think what I'm saying. You have no choice. Instead of going to South Beach to pick up something, you are not in the pickup, but come and pick up some blessings. Instead of going to Las Olas Boulevard and down Hollywood Beach to walk down to see what you could pick up, you got to come pick up some blessings because you're not going to pick up anything. Because you already look old and cold. They might be looking for an ambulance to put you into. So you come to the masjid. So it's not that you come, you have no choice because the dunya has left you. You see the point I'm getting at? Dunya ne aapko chor kar bag gaya. You were running behind the dunya for 40 years. You had wealth, you had nice house, you had nice car, Lexus, Mercedes, Mercedes, BMs and sports and convertible. You were running behind the dunya. Even your children run from you. Your boys and girls get married, they're gone away. What happened to you? You're alone home. You have no choice but to come and hang out with Brother Abu Bakr and all these Brother Sheikh and everybody else in Darululum. You don't even have kids home to hang out with. You have no more friends because they know she is no excitement to hang around anymore. So you, it's because the dunya has left us. The dunya has left us. And now we're pretending that we realize reality. It's because we can't face reality. We don't have the health, we don't have, because we already shared all the money for our children. We put everything off. Wealth, money, time, family, friends, nobody has time for us. Those friends we had in our sports days, it's either they're dead or they're gone. So we have no choice but to come back to the masjid. La ilaha illallah. Mashallah, you will get your blessings. What I'm saying to my youths and students and college friends and everybody who are young at my age in your 30s and 40s, <laughs> I am saying, don't waste this 40s and 30s and wait for when you reach. You may not live, brother, as age to reach 70 years. 
You may not live some of these brothers who are in their 80s. They are very fortunate. That's the flip of what I want to tell you on myself. They are very fortunate to live over 65. That they could also collect social security and also collect some blessings, inshallah. You, <laughs> you may not live for that. You will not have the time to make the toba. You may not have the, we may not have the time to come and make the dhikr. Come for Juma, come for Salah, read Quran. We could die. Do you know last night we made dua for a sister in the dhikr? The sister is 23 years old. She died yesterday. Huh? She died from cancer. A young girl, she used to come here. They're from around here. Her brother has about two or three daughters. 23 years old. She just died. From what? Boom. Cancer. We don't know. This is not a story. Last night we made dua. Today is the janazah in Pampano Masjid for the sister. Today, now after Juma. We may not live for 50 years to do it. So don't wait for the dunya to leave us. And then we come into masjid. What I'm telling you, you will get blessings. But if you run from the dunya, don't let wait for the dunya to run from you. You see my point? You run from the dunya and come here now when you're young, when you're strong, when you got money, when you got your beauty, and say, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, you will get double the blessings. Ten times more blessings. Because the Prophet wasallam says, those people who spend their youth in the path of Allah, they will be under the shade of Allah on the day of Qiyamah. Allahu Akbar. And I want to conclude with that verse. That's hadith, inshallah. Those who spend their youth in the path of Allah, because Allah knows you're beautiful, you have health, you have strength, you have wealth, you have everything, and you sacrifice that for Allah on the day of Qiyamah, you will be under the shade of Allah, no interrogation and trouble and problems. That is the day when people will be so tense, they'll be eating their fingernail and be eaten up to the elbow. And then the hand will grow back again, says the Prophet ﷺ. And they'll be eaten again. You know when you're in an examination, you're going through secondary and immigration and you're waiting to know what's going on? They will eat from here to here, it will grow back again. That's the pressure, the trial, the tribulation, the tension. But if you spend your youth from now with all your beauty and wealth in the path of Allah, you will be under the shade of Allah. No problem, straight to Jannah. That's the past, inshallah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahmeen, Ya Ghafur Rahim. Ya Allah, we thank thee, Allah, alhamdulillah, for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, Allah. We ask thee, Allah, to send your peace and blessings unto the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask thee, Allah, to save us from the fitna, the distraction of shaitan, the problems and difficulties, and the attractions of the dunya, ya Allah. Guide us in the right path, ya Allah. Bless us with iman and taqwa and piety, ya Allah, so we can do our duty to you, ya Allah. Give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter, inshallah. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya. Hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kina Allah binar. Bi rahmatika ya rahmin. إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وسام اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكتك المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمةك يا رحم الرحيمين عباد الله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وعز وجل وهم وأكبر الله أكبر كم سلام Let these radical imams brainwash some of us. We come here, we sit, we sleep in khutbas. We don't get the message. That's why we miss. This is all I need you to be grateful, Allah. Are you telling me Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will not protect the, the prestige of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Only living for business. That's all our dream. Let me see who shall save you now. <laughs>